Hey guys, Auspicious Aussie here, and welcome to episode 33 of the San Marino Challenge. Now, as you can see, we're in Syria. We've finally done it. We've finally made it. This is the promised land. This is where the San Marino Challenge is. It's going to start to take off in terms of us developing players. You know, the finances, they're already looking a lot, a lot better. I'll show you them very quickly here. As you can see, 3.4 million in the bank. Look at the projection. 25 million in the bank by the end of the season, which is awesome. Obviously, we've struggled with it throughout the whole series so far, but now that we're in Serie A, in the you know the top flight of Italian football, we're going to be getting a decent, a very decent amount of TV money each season. Of course, a lot of our expenses are quite low. I mean, if you look at our our wage budget on the side here. We're currently spending 78000 and the wage budget is 81000 Now, if you look at players from Juventus, Napoli, both of the, the Milan clubs, hell, even Roma as well. I mean, most of their players are about... Well, probably between... Even their average players are probably between fifty and 80000 per week. And we're spending that with our whole squad. Obviously, you know... It's expected because we're a newly promoted team, but uh, that's just crazy, to be honest. Uh, we do have a lot to go through this episode, of course. We'll kick it off with the uh, the transfers here. As you can see, a lot has been done. A lot of these deals were actually set up uh, prior to the window opening. Uh, but if you look at the outs here, we've got a few a few familiar faces leaving the club, unfortunately. The first of which was Christian Kelly. He left to Latina Calcio for 48500 Again, we're not getting a lot of money and these players aren't that good. Nor, you know, our reputation doesn't really, you know, allow us to, to be demanding high transfers for our players. Uh, but he left, of course, had a pretty good first season with the club when he came in. Although last season he didn't really play it too much. I think he only played about eight games in the whole season, so he left. It wasn't really good enough. Uh, we already had another backup, uh, I think, in Perosi. So it was a pretty easy decision to get him off, um, stop him sort of complaining about first-team football and stuff like that. Uh, the next player, unfortunately, Soleri. He left for Como. 45000 fee for him. And, I mean, let's just show, I'll show you his profile. He was... Uh, he was a pretty good player for us, let's be honest. Of course, that first season that he came into the team, 13 goals with two assists. It was it was decent. It was decent. Obviously, it didn't lead us to... Well, it led us to promotion, but I think we needed a lot better, you know, in Serie B. Of course, we loaned in the two strikers, who, albeit, didn't really perform as well as we wanted them to. Um, but he only played two games last season. Did score one goal, which is pretty impressive in the two games. Uh, but yeah, he's gone to Como. Sort of playing at that sort of Serie C, Serie, maybe Serie B level. But I, I kind of doubt that. Anyways, he left. Uh, the next player to leave was Ingoglia. Now, this was a very hard one. But we un we have unfortunately brought in uh, a few centre-backs. We've, we've spent a bit of money as well bringing in those players into the club. Uh, so he left for who else but our rivals... You know, the series rivals Medina for 190000 So, I think his transfer fee was a, a bit better than what we, you know, that what than what I was kind of expecting. We'll say that. Um, of course, had a very good season. Well, two very good seasons since coming in uh, back when we were in Serie C. Yeah, good stuff from him. Um, I'm very, you know, pleased with his sort of contribution. Uh, the next player let go was Stefanelli. Just out on loan. His contract does run out at the end of the season. Uh, we actually got Monza, a Serious C club. Um, we got them as one of our affiliates. So, yeah, we loaned him out, and he will be at Monza for the season. Now, let's get into the players that we have brought into the club, because, as you can see, there's quite a few. And, as I mentioned, we have spent a little bit of money. So, yeah. First player I brought in was Irma Coma, Left back... Pretty good, very low wages. Um, probably will be the starting left back for the season, uh, more than likely. Um, although he might be rotated, um, we'll just have to wait and see. He came in from Udinese, 
or Udinese on a free transfer. Again, just a Bosman. We just signed him up. We were lacking the the left back, of course. Um, when our lonely left back last season, of course, went back to his club. And then, unfortunately, we couldn't bring him back in for this season. Uh, the next player I brought in was Monteperto. Um, nice little striker. Of course, we had to replace Soleri. So we brought him in on a free transfer from Napoli. And uh, I'm pretty happy with that. He's got some decent stats. Only 21 years old. Uh, will he be a very you know, lethal goal scorer? Remains to be seen. But, you know, it's good enough for, for now. For now. Uh, the next player I brought in was Abdallah. Hakim Abdallah from Sharks Monteb. As you can see, 26-year-old Comoran. Comoran, yeah. I think he's from Comoros. Yeah. Um, again, another left back. He's on very high wages, and I kind of regret signing him, to be honest, because I found some better left backs out there. He is quite good. Don't get me wrong, he's quite good. However, 3.2k a week is sort of the high end of what we're paying players at the moment. And I just I don't feel that great about getting him. Anyways, we'll move on. He'll he'll be back up. So, you know, we've got some competition for the left back position, that's for sure. Uh, the next player I brought in was Matteo Conforti. Yeah, I'm really, really, really happy with this guy. We signed him from Genoa for 1.1 million, which is pretty expensive. Of course, we... I only had about five million in the transfer budget this season, but as you can see, four-star player, possible five-star, only twenty years old, either-footed, and of course, it essentially means that he can play the inverted wing-back role, lacking a little bit of dribbling. But overall, I think he's going to be one of the better players, you know, going going forward into the future. Two point seven k a week, so he's on a little bit less than. Abdullah, but I think he's definitely going to to be a dangerous player for us. Uh, the next player I brought in was Pesci, or Pecci. I'm not really too sure how we pronounce his name. Uh, but he's the centre-back to replace in Goglia. Looks really, really good. Uh, only 20 years old as well. 20-year-old Italian. Really strong. Two-and-a-half star potential. Uh, sorry, two-and-a-half star current ability with a three-and-a-half, possibly four-and-a-half potential. And, uh, yeah, I mean, he just looks good. He definitely just looks good. Um, good bravery and aggression as well, which always isn't, you know, a, a positive, but I think in terms of his concentration and other stuff like that, it, it might complement him, and I think he's going to be a pretty good player in the center of our defense. As you can see, only on 750 per week as well, on a free transfer from Lazio. I think it was a, a good bit of business there. Uh, the next player, I, I, I'm very, very happy we got in. Foliados, who is a 21-year-old Uruguayan striker. And as you can see, he's very, very good. Free transfer just popped up randomly in my scout center. And as you can see, 15 off the ball, 15 composure, pretty good acceleration, really good dribbling, um, good passing and technique as well, which is sort of what you want in your uh, attacking deep-lying forward. As you can see there, 10 finishing is pretty low, uh, but again, um, I think a lot of his other stats are probably going to contribute a little bit more to him getting in goal scoring positions and scoring those goals. Um, so yeah, very, very happy with him. Um, again, just was on a free transfer, um, left his Uruguayan club, and now he finds himself at San Marino. Uh, the next player brought in is Tikomoriov. Yeah, I think that's correct. Um, as you can see, this guy is a, a bit of a weird one. Only 18 years old. Good Russian striker. He's played a little bit for the under-21s in Russia, or for Russia. Um, decent little pace. Again, good dribbling, finishing, first touch, and technique. I'm just not too sure what to make of him. He was on a free transfer, 975 per week. Um, and I just brought him in because... Yeah, why not? I mean, 18 years old. He's got the, the age to possibly turn into a decent player. Um, three and a half star potential. Something might happen. If not, we might be able to sell him on for a, a decent little bit of money once he's uh, developed a little bit better. Uh, he was brought in from AS Monaco, as well as this guy, Thiago Ribeiro. Um, as you can see, center midfielder, we needed a, another center mid, and he's a four star current ability player. Again, I mean, we've got a very, very young squad. He's only 21. 
Um, not paying anything to Monaco for his loan as well. And uh, he's really sort of impressed me in preseason. Um, and as you can see, in the TIM qualifying round that we've just played uh, before the season started, he did pick up an 8.1. So one of the standout performers. I mean, overall, uh, we had a lot of good players in that game. Uh, the next player is Cesar. Um, I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, I did do a Hungarian translation to English, and it did say Cesar, so we'll go with that. 20-year-old um, Hungarian, very, very solid, really good positioning, marking, obviously strength, but he's also pacey, and not to mention, he's also left-footed, so we, I mean, in the tactic, obviously, you want your left-footed centre-back to be the left-sided centre-back, so yeah, happy with that. Massive wages, unfortunately, 8.5k a week, which is pretty steep. Um, as you can see, 625k release clause was paid to that club. I'm not even going to try and pronounce their name. Ferran Svozzi? Ferran Rose? Yeah. That club. Um, in Bulgaria? Hungary. Sorry. Hungary. My bad. I was looking at B Bulgarian players as well. That's why I'm a little bit mistaken there. Uh, the next player brought in another center back, Stefano Leo. From FC Basel for 750000 Another release clause. Sort of went for these younger players from... I mean, you wouldn't really call Switzerland an obscure country. But these countries that have release clauses with their players. As you can see, he's only 18 again. 20 determination. Pretty good centre-back stats or attributes. Um, and physicals do look pretty good as well. 3-star current ability. 4-star potential. Um, I definitely like the uh, the look of him. And 750k, like this sort of price range, um, you're definitely going to... Well, obviously they're good players, but you're definitely going to make a profit going forward once they've uh, developed and get a little bit older. And, of course, the, the playing time as well. Uh, the next player I brought in was Paolo Novi. Or Novi. Um, basically a defensive midfielder that can play centre mid as well. Left-footed. Just wanted a, a backup. So he's come in on loan from Empoli. Um, and we also do have a optional future fee of 4.2 million. So, essentially, if he does, you know, develop, I mean, he probably might be playing. He might be starting because his three-star current ability, four-star potential. I like the look of him, at, especially at 19 years old. Could be that deep line playmaker. Got really good vision there as well at 16. And he's solid defensively, which is pretty important. 13 free kick taking. That's a nice little bonus stat there as well. Uh, we are paying 4.4k a month if we do use him. And the final player brought in was Iago Gil. 17 year old left back from Spain. 3.3k a week, which is expensive for a 17 year old. Uh, but if you look at this guy, he's very good already at the age of 17. And I think. He's already a well, he's already a four-star current ability player. So essentially, he's our best left back at the club already. Um, <laughs> he was sort of a I wouldn't say like a panic buy, but I saw his release clause of what was it seven hundred thousand, and I basically said to myself, I think we need to just have a punt and just go with it, you know, risk it for the biscuit, or so. And I think that he's going to be. Probably one of the better players once we are able to get better coaches and better training grounds within the next couple of seasons. I'm going to obviously try and upgrade them um, as soon as possible. And I think once we do that, he could turn into a, a real star, a real high quality player. So yeah, that does the transfers. As you can see, a lot of activity, a, a bit of a changed squad, to be honest. Um, I, I, I'm a little bit worried because I feel like our depth is lacking a little bit. It, it worries me, but we have a very good squad, I think. I think we're going to... I think I don't want to say definitely, but I think we're going to avoid relegation. I think there are a lot of teams in this division that are possibly weaker than us. And I know at least three. For example, you know, Frosione, Spal. I would throw Spal in there. Of course, we beat them last season, I think. Um, Chievo, Empoli... Those types of clubs. Pescara, of course, got promoted with us last season. I think we can beat those teams. And if we beat them, get to, what, 40 points? 
we'll avoid relegation. Anyways, let's have a look at the fixtures for preseason. Played a lot of uh, decent teams, I think, in this preseason. The first of which was a 2-0 loss against Sampdoria. Pretty disappointing there, to be honest, to open the uh, to open the, the season with a loss. We bounced back against Sparta Prague, beat them 4-1. Managed to beat, of course, league rivals Empoli 3-2. Uh, could only manage a 2-0 draw with Milan, AC Milan, that is. Uh, we then managed to smash Red Bull Salzburg 4-0. And of course, the first proper game of the season was a 2-1 victory over Cagliari in the TIM Cup third qualifying round. Goal scorers, of course, Ribeiro, the lone Portuguese center midfielder from AS Monaco, and of course, Boschini, uh, the right winger for us. So yeah, really good performance there. Um, as you can see, we opened the scoring, they got one back after half time, and then Boschini bossed it and yeah, got the winner. So today's game is going to be, I mean, it's a big game against Torino here. And as you can see, it's going to be tough because Empoli have already picked up a win. So they're one of the teams that I'm sort of expecting us to to be able to beat, you know, in terms of league position. I want to think that we're better than Empoli. We beat them in preseason as well, of course. Um, let's go into the lineup for today's game. As you can see, we're still going with the, the same tactic here. Uh, the 4-1, four, 4-1. One, four, one. So... It's, it's done as well, of course, since we changed it. We had really bad form. Not really bad, but we had bad form in, was it Serious C? And then we got promoted that season once we changed to this tactic. So yeah, um, the first thing I have to mention, of course, in goals today, unfortunately, we're going to have to be going with Pavoni. Uh, that is because Ingvarsson has picked up an injury and he will be out for at least another two weeks, probably. So that's unfortunate, but Pavoni, he's a, he's a decent backup. He'll he'll do his job, hopefully. Um, as we go through the back line here, Conforti, of course, one of the new boys. I mean, essentially, everyone but Scarby in this back line is a new player. So Conforti will be starting at right back. I'm going to go Pesci and Scarby as the two center backs. Irma Cora will be the left back today. Toscano is going to stay in his def uh, defensive midfield role. Then we're going to go with Bashini on the right wing, Forte on the left wing, Ribeiro and Ambro will be our two central midfield box-to-box -box players today. And then up front, we're going to go with Foliados. Of course, he's the Uruguayan striker we have brought in. Um, the only player that really didn't play well last game was Forte. He picked up a 6.2 rating, and I had to sub him off. So I'm a little bit worried about that. Uh, but the bench today is going to be San Giorgi, Stefano Leo, Menangini, Novi, Manfaro... Chester, sorry, Miembo, Abdullah, Jancheki, and Barosi. Let's get into today's game. It's going to be a tough one. Torino, I, I believe Torino have done pretty well uh, since the game started, of, or since the series started, I guess. Um, I'm going to tell them that we're the under underdogs, and <laughs> I mean, I feel like that's going to come up a lot this season, the fact that we're the underdogs going into games, even at home, of course. Um... But yeah, we'll see what happens, boys. It's going to be, it's going to be a tough season, but I think we can, you know, we can avoid relegation, and I'm definitely going to do absolutely everything possible. I'll spend the money if I have to in January to to avoid that relegation. Because if we go back down to Serie B, or if I lose the job, of course, it's going to be pretty bad. And of course, I, I, I mean, would the series be over? I don't really want to talk about that. Let's just focus on today's game. Hopefully, we'll pick up a, at least a point in this first game of the season in Serie A. I mean, how exciting. Bashini bring the ball forward. Forte, he should have done better. He really should have done better. Straight at the goalkeeper there. Could have blasted it in the net. Ribeiro now, off the corner. Pesci with a nice little header. Is it Pe... Yeah, I'm going to go with Pesci. I mean, we're not we're not playing too badly, to be honest. Three shots on target. They've only had the one. Uh, Irma Korma. Yeah, I mean, we're picking up a couple of yellow cards now, actually. Pesci, you know, two people in our back line have already picked up yellow cards. That's a little bit worrying. Definitely worries me. And of course, Pesci, well, he's, he's quite aggressive and quite brave. So, you know, there might be some uh, red cards in his locker room. 
in his locker. Hopefully not. And definitely, hopefully not today. Um, interestingly enough, Bashini's on a 7.3, which is quite high considering we haven't really done anything. Uh, I'm going to tell them a far, yeah, I'm far from pleased apart from Bashini, of course. And I mean, we've got a couple of poor performers out there right now. Ambro, 6.5. Forte, 6.4. I mean, we've got to be doing better than that. I mean, they've got some pretty good players as well. They've got Zaza up front. Serge Aurea. Oh, that's a good save. But yeah, they put it in the back of the net. Pavoni got down well. It's going to the, the VAR. I mean, was he offside? I think the goal is going to stand. I don't really... I didn't really see anything too wrong with that, to be honest. Yeah, so they do score. Uh, Toscano's picked up a yellow card now as well. Um, we're going to make some changes. Let me pause the game here. Um, yeah, Conforti's not played too well, so we're going to take him off. Um, although that's a little bit risky. Um, I'm going to bring Novi on. Yep, Novi's coming on. I mean, I kind of want to do a triple change, if I'm being honest. Montepurto up front. Yep, let's do it. Alrighty, come on, boys. Alright, we, we might tell them to push forward now, actually, as well. I really didn't want to lose this first game. I, I had high hopes of at least getting a result. I mean, if you look at the stats, we're the better team, I think, as well. Come on, boys. Novi, Montepurto, Menangini. Come on. Ribeiro, oh, save. What a save. We do have a corner, though. Forte, Ribeiro, and it's cleared away. Pesci was offside. Yeah. I mean, there's only about 10 minutes left. Can we manage to, to score a goal? At least get the point. That's, that's what I wanted in this first game. And like I said, we've been the better team. It's going to be a harsh loss if we do lose today. Come on, boys. Pressure. All right, we have won the ball back. Scarby goes all the way back to Pavoni. Who plays a risky ball. Yeah, that was a really bad ball. They're going to score here for sure. Yep, Zaza. Damn it. That was a... Yeah, Pavoni. I don't think he's good enough. Which is really frustrating. It's on a 6.3. Oh, that, that really upsets me because I, I, I had high hopes. Don't tell me he's going to give the ball away again. Come on, Forte. Not that it really matters, but it'll be nice to at least score a goal. Montepuerto, get in, son. There we go. We got one back. It's probably not going to matter. Uh, but that's really disappointing. Purely the fact that, you know, Ingvarsson's injured. And he got injured right at the start of the season as well. And Zaza's in behind. I mean, that's a good save. Good save by Pavoni. However, yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to get an equalizer, which is unfortunate because we got the goal. If we just didn't concede that stupid, you know, that stupid goal from Pavoni's risky pass into the defense, you know, who knows what might have happened. The draw, I mean, maybe we, maybe we would have conceded anyway. I'm not too sure. We've got 30 seconds left here. Can we do the unimaginable? Pesci to Novi. Ambro switches it. Fort oh my god, what did he do? Why didn't he go for the ball? Is that uh, Arzani? The Australian player, of course. Let me have a look, actually. I'm curious. Hmm. Yeah, it is too. Daniel Arzani. Currently on loan at Celtic in real life. Yeah, he was uh, he was pretty impressive at the World Cup. Uh, but yeah, the 2-1 loss in our first game. Like I said, I wanted the draw. And we haven't started off too well. Although, Torino, they're a pretty good side. So I guess we can't really be too upset. It's not going to be an easy season, guys, so expect a few losses, and I mean, the wins are probably going to be 
few and far between, but it's our first season in Serie A. It's it's going to be difficult, and I'm under no, you know, sort of dis- disillusion about how tough it's actually going to be. Inter- yeah, I mean that's pretty interesting. Pescara have managed to pick up a win. Who did they beat? Very curious about that, actually. Oh, they beat Frosione. Fair enough, fair enough. Would have been nice to have a bit of an easier start and sort of get a, get us off to winning ways against one of the you know lower teams. Torino are a pretty... You know, they're a mid-table club, I would say, but they're decent. They're not sort of going to... They're not going to be fighting for relegation, in my opinion. Um, so I think... You know, we're a little bit unlucky to not get the result there, or a result. However, it is what it is. We move on. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Drop the video a like. First, you know, first episode of Serie A. And uh, there's going to hopefully be many, many more to come. Goodbye, guys.